Live from Mountain View, California, it's The Q at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone, live in Silicon Valley. This is OpenStack SV. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. We've been doing theCUBE, it's our fifth season, and one of my most uh, exciting things about theCUBE is we get to talk to some great luminaries, uh, experts, friends, guys who just know what they're talking about, just tech athletes, and that's really what this next segment's all about. Our next guest is Lou Tucker, who's the VP, CTO of Cisco Cloud, and Jim McHugh, VP of UCS Marketing. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Again, CUBE well, alumni both. Welcome to Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Love it here. Silicon Valley is where the action is, and I'm so glad they did this event because this event was kind of an ad hoc splash mob. It was like, you know, well, we got Paris coming, they did Singapore mm -hmm. last time, mm -hmm. and. No one, no one really flies that far. No one wants to fly that far. Uh, it's expensive, and so Silicon Valley, the demand is so high right here. Yeah. The people are all here. This, this, this was one of those pop-up shops, whatever, right? I mean, they just appeared because this is sort of the center of this. It's great to have OpenStack come to Silicon are Valley. Are you seeing friends here? Uh, tons of friends. This is, this is one of old home week. I mean, I think that the community is now large enough that we are our own sort of tribe around OpenStack yeah. now, and we go from venue to venue, company to company, I think in some cases. Yeah, yeah. you uh, see someone, hey, remember we worked together 10 years ago or <laughs> exactly whatever? Exactly right. And it's, it's fun, everyone's got new fresh assignments, ideas. I mean, OpenStack reminds me uh, of the old days in the 80s and 90s when, when you start to really think about re-architecting things. And Lou, really, first question to you is, uh, and we kind of talked about this before, but I want to re revisit it. It's distributed computing, it's, it's systems programming, it's network architecture, it's all rolled into one now, and, and it's a little bit of the same paradigm concepts, but rolled differently with the modern, yeah. modern needs, which is integrated yeah. stacks, faster response time, north, south, east, west, virtualization. What's your take on it? Yeah. I mean, as, but, a, as you know, a computer scientist, you're, like, you're certainly energized by it, but what's your take? So, you know, actually, Martin gave a talk today, and he, and he talked about you know, what makes it sort of so hard for us to do you know, policy-based computing, that's what we, as computer scientists, that's how we'd like to really make this work. And he's saying, well, in virtualization, we created a new, new platform there, and, but that was for the IT people, not for apps. Mm -hmm. And now, what is the platform for application developers? Application developers in today's age needed a platform that runs across the entire data center. It can't run on a single host, it runs across a thousand hosts. That's what OpenStack is. It's that platform for the application guy. And now the application guys go, okay, so I can have VM. Or some other application guy, I want a container. That's even a lighter weight construct for me. So this is all about getting the apps built. And that's what I think is, is, is fun. It's kind of interesting that we're getting a lot of people who maybe built apps who are now finding they're having to rebuild the infrastructure, the platform, because that's the kind of platform they want their apps on now. And an open source certainly playing a big role in it, which is not proprietary, it's completely out in the open. We were just talking earlier with some of the HP folks about shipping code now in this era, mm -hmm. where people see your code right away. You're, you're yeah. on, you're, it's, in the, it's in the open. Exactly right, <laughs> exactly right. You can't suck. I mean, <laughs> you really, I mean, if, if you suck, you know quickly. Yeah, yeah. And if you keep sucking, you're out, right? So, it, it, it is, it's ruthless that way. I mean, but it, it does produce better results. And in fact, um, I interact a lot with our, um, you know, intellectual property attorneys within Cisco and, and they want to know how are you vetting everything that's going on. I'm saying we, it starts in the cloud. We're starting it in the public. Every line of code is written in the public first. So therefore, we're weak in certain patent ideas and everything else, that really isn't affected. But the quality of the code is subject to immediate inspection, like you say. So where we have had issues is oftentimes people are not used to that model and so they try to hide stuff in their code. You can't hide an open stack. Yeah, you can't hide the ball. Everything, Jim, customers you. don't want the ball to be hidden either. So what's your take as you talk to customers? Because you hear install base is massive. Yeah. So it's not even like, even discussion. It's such a massive install base. So you have install base and you've got to modernize either incrementally or refreshes. Yeah, well, you know the funny thing is, Lou and I go far enough back <laughs> in open source that we're so <laughs> used to having these discussions with customers <laughs> and explaining, you know, what they want is, you know, that, you know, I think people said it today, they want to trust you to deliver the business outcomes they need, 
but they want a backup plan just in case, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. you can't suck, like we said. But well, from you, the customer standpoint, you're out of business. You're out of business. Uh, okay. The, yeah, the okay. consequences are pretty grave. And so what, that is, what they're getting now is the, the freedom to say, look, I know you're going to go down an open path, and I know there's a whole community behind that path that is actually going to keep you on track. And so that is absolutely what's going on, and we're just excited to see it happen. Yeah. I mean, this is what yeah. we've been working on. So what's for. your take on OpenStack? Obviously, Silicon Valley, this is like, you know, like an, an event, it's a party. I mean, it's a tech party um, here, as you're saying. Um, how is the OpenStack community doing from, from a Silicon Valley standpoint, Lou? Because you know, we want to move fast, everyone's got their running shoes on, they're powering through. They want to see you know, things better, faster, cheaper. Um, and it's so, a growing so organization, think, it's very young. Yeah, it, it's very young, but I think the idea has, has, has already put down deep roots. And so mm -hmm. the idea of OpenStack, of a community built in open source, platform for cloud computing is so compelling that we've got Eucalyptus being bought by HP and now Martin Mikos is now at, at HP. So this is an idea that now has been really broadly accepted, particularly within Silicon Valley. Um, we will, now it's the next phase. We've got to get into the next phase where we now have an entire ecosystem of other companies that are built for OpenStack, built these things on top of OpenStack. Yeah. We've got to get the rest of the ecosystem built out. So I have to ask the question, if HP's all in, is Cisco not all in? Cisco's all in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cisco's all in. But of here, course you're all in. Exactly Come on, right. put the chips in. Exactly Call right. the bluff. Well, look it's, like, it. it's Texas so, Hold'em. So we, 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 we recently announced our inner cloud that, that we're spending a lot of money and building out, essentially delivering OpenStack as a service. So now that we're building that as a service and, a, and as a service that will be very important for Cisco's SaaS applications around collaboration, WebEx, security, all of those SaaS services built to our partnerships. And then with the UCS team, yeah. we've announced you know, OpenStack solutions that we can deliver for, to be sold to customers for on-premise deployment uh, and of, you know, in their own data centers of OpenStack Cloud. Jim, talk about the customer aspect, because being all in also matters, you got to actually deliver the solutions. The data center is really changing significantly. Yep. And you're, you know, with UCS, you live this every day, this is your, this is your world. What, what's, the, what's the update on the, the data center? Because born in the cloud, certainly Amazon has shown, they're winning there. Yep. Okay, give them that, but not everyone's born in the cloud. People are born on-prem in enterprises as a data center. You know, I think what Amazon showed, that if you pay attention to the developer and meet the developer's needs, you're going to do well. So whether they're winning in the data center, there's still a lot to go on the data center. And you know, I think what we're seeing more and more. Amazon's not winning in the data center, they're trying to even get the foot in the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. what, that's their big push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing more and more that customers are demanding, what's the right platform for the application? Right, and that is this idea of application-centric infrastructure or just an application driving the business needs. So there's plenty of solutions right now where we just go to market and it's running on Linux or some are running on Windows, right? And they fit there. Mm -hmm. But the newer application isn't there, right? The newer application's target is OpenStack. A lot of things we're doing around big data, a lot of the analytics stuff that's coming on, it's just demanding a whole new way of going about it, and Cisco knows that. We're, we're treating it, we're actually developing our infrastructure and coming out with product lines that actually meet those different workloads and are targeting to solve those. We're just having this conversation mm -hmm. with HP, it's a little bit more severe there with their turnaround with Meg Whitman kind of leading the five year turnaround, which is a huge, and that's a long time, it's a lot of luxury there, but the comment I was making was, what a great time to do a turnaround because we all know that big gust of wind is going to be coming on a sustained basis. That's the inflection point. That's mm -hmm. this awesome, awesome innovation converges. Everything's happening, right? So platform up and down the stack is completely mm -hmm. changing. So if you're on the right side of that wind, you will win big. Certainly at the size of HP and Cisco, you guys aren't hurting. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys aren't doing a turnaround. Mm -hmm. What bet are you making? Where are the sales on the on you know uh, on, in, in so, the market? Are you betting on you know hardware commoditization? Are you betting on software? Are you betting on what? I mean, what's I the think, big bet? I think we're, we're betting on the fact that applications are changing. And so, if we take even the service provider market, and we, uh, for example, most people know we've been working directly with Comcast and a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So that entire market's realized it, for them it's a time to market for their new application, their new series, their new product, or whatever, building it on a cloud is the fastest way to do that. So those, that entire, I think, cable market is shifting now for redoing their data center so that they're running a cloud for their Xfinity application. This is not to be a cloud provider. They're doing it 
just, just to provisioning make, apps. accelerate their yeah. application deployment yeah. time because they're competing against Amazon, Netflix. Google, <laughs> Netflix, and everybody else who's using the cloud. So they want to take away that advantage that they have by building their own. The second area is in terms of what we hear, NFV. Because that's where we're all realizing that, again, the time to meet the, on the, the demands of new customers coming in wanting different kinds of, of networking services delivered to them, VPN services, you know, backhaul, all of these different things, it can be delivered much faster if they do it through software mm -hmm. than through wheeling in big expensive appliances. Cisco sees that from their customers, hears that from the customers, and so Cisco's responding. And so a lot, most of our NFB work now is all based on OpenStack. And so I think that we'll, we'll see that OpenStack is pretty much becoming the de facto sort of standard platform for deploying NFB applications. So developers, Jim, you mentioned that you know, anyone who can get the developers in a spot that's positive will win big. Lou, you mentioned the bet on changing mm -hmm. applications, NFB. You're talking about really the future of how people mm -hmm. program. So I got to talk about the enterprise. The mm -hmm. enterprise really hasn't had a developer strategy since the mainframe, in the old spaghetti code days, we used to call it. Because client server, basically everyone else, all the outsourced channel did that. Yep. Yep. Management consult yep. is the big six at the time, and then the web is the web, and now we have born in the cloud. So we're seeing a, a complete so shift to enterprise are hiring in-house developers. Yeah. Yeah. What is that, what do you, how do you see that? Are they hiring DevOps guys, are they hiring? I, I think it's in two areas. One, it's, it's not solely original application development. Most of this is rapid deployment of, mm -hmm. if, if they're going to, let's say big data, they want to run cloud error, they want to run any of these new applications, they want to know how quickly can they, they don't have a year and a half to integrate this into yeah. their old environment. <laughs> they want to be able to <laughs> have three five different companies come in with an application that's built for the cloud that they can do a bake off right then and immediately compare these different applications and then make a decision. The DevOps come, have come into play here because they still are running their infrastructure and they want to essentially reduce the cost of running their infrastructure through increased automation of that infrastructure. And that's where the DevOps model comes in, and it's the two layers. One is in the cloud layer itself, an open stack, and the other is of the application orchestration. Yep. The new apps that they're bringing in, they need to also be orchestrated. And so that is the new developer in IT. So we're getting some, David Pollock's got a funny tweet here, just kind of changed <laughs> the game here in the crowd chat. And in Japan, feudal Japan, they made samurai step on a cross. What's OpenStack's loyalty test? <laughs> oh boy, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> Thank you, David, for that great tweet on the crowd chat. I, I, think, I, think it, yeah. I think it's a, the loyalty test, <laughs> the loyalty to, trans, to the open source principles around transparency, around open code, around code speaks louder than anything else. If you want to win an argument, show me the code. Um, those, those are the things. So what we're, the, the cross that we're perhaps stepping on is the need for, for, for protecting things by locking them up behind proprietary implementations. Um, instead going for, for direct benefit through the transparency and openness that you get. So doing it in the open. Doing it yeah. in the open. All right, I just tweeted that back. Thank you, David Pollock. So Jim, back <laughs> to you, customers. What is the biggest shift that you see in your customer base that is forcing them to move faster? People are always indifferent. There's always a motivating force that, yeah. uh, uh, um, the, the fire under someone's butt that goes, I got to do it. Look, and you even heard it today in some of the sessions, our customer has changed. When we were rolling out virtualization, the first phase of success of UCS, which is five years old, OpenStack's what, four? Mm -hmm. So we're like yeah, one year right, older right, right, and right, right. trailing both of these. Uh, that was IT. Now it's line of business. Right? And if we were starting a company today, how mm -hmm. many of us would actually build mm -hmm. out a big data center? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't. We would consume services. Right. And that's what the line of business guy is driving. And then there's another customer that's coming around that's actually probably even more important than the developer, the data scientist. The guy that actually doesn't want to set up the Hadoop infrastructure or know how what OpenStack is running at. He just actually wants to do the processing data and finding new customer insights and trying to drive a lot more activity. And so with these factors coming, you have Honestly, IT is becoming that benevolent dictator uh, mm -hmm. where they can actually mm -hmm. say. Well, I, IT is IT changed from being a department to everywhere. I mean, that's remember IT was a department. Mm -hmm. You called them up for mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. They did stuff. Yeah. They mm -hmm. racked and stacked. Now it's 
No, what? No, I don't want. So people are bypassing IT. No one's happy with IT. Well, now I mean, well, you know, not, you know, not, not entirely yeah. true. There are really I'm good. Overstating, I'm yeah. overstating the trend. But, <laughs> but, but it's you know, also if you did a survey, yeah. we did a survey with Yvon on Hadoop, and IT gave themselves passing grades, and they were measuring their ability to do POCs. The business units were giving them a failing grade yeah. for not delivering the value. Right. So, so there's a disconnect with who, <laughs> the perception. Mm -hmm. I know you guys love the IT, but I do too. But I, but. If IT is going to be that, like, it's like going through the airport. You know, yeah. you don't want to take your shoes off or take your belt off, but you do it because you have to. Now, IT was like that, but we, IT should be a service layer. Yeah. They are, they are. They are yeah, becoming an internal service provider. I think, um, I mean, see, you know, Jonathan walking around, we was talking about software-defined economy. When, when things start getting defined by software, you can not just bring your own device, you bring your own app. Yep. Why shouldn't we also, if you like a particular app, you bring it in to your, your domain within, within your own company, whatever, and you run your app on your cloud. IT simply can provide a safe way for you to be able to do that and know that th that app can't do malicious things to the rest of the information. And if they can provide all the assurances, you can bring your own apps. Well, by default you do. And Every day you walk in with your phone, you're bringing right. your own apps. That's right. And yeah, well, David Pollock just commented your comment, said, why is the focus on the apps? End of the day, helping customer workflows is what will bring in the money. Though, that I would agree. I mean, but, <laughs> but that's, that's what I mean. An that's app the process. Is, that's what an app is. Yes, it, the app it, is, the, is the money maker, not a cost right. reduction. In some that's case, right. reduction, reducing the cost, but the outcome of value, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, Amazon is, is interesting to me, and I want to talk about the impact to the enterprise, because essentially we're getting back to this, this new model of Amazon's disruptive reduction in cost while increasing functionality is really a really weird dynamic. You don't see this very often. A complete commoditizer mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. innovating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is an amazing, because they win on critical mass. That's right. You guys That's have right. critical mass, so um, does this influence the thinking in the cloud for you guys? You mentioned like your customer Comcast, certainly they're doing cloud yep. for a specific reason, agility, yep. right? Speed to value. Yep. Speed. Right. Um, right. So what, how does the Amazon concept, is it replicable I, in the I enterprise? Think, yes, I actually, I think Amazon proved to the world, and I think that this is the big debt we owe to them, is that cloud computing <laughs> we is, pay it, believe me. It's <laughs> yeah, probably stuff. the fastest way to develop and deploy new applications, therefore bring business value sooner. So it is cloud computing is that provably now the fastest way to develop and deploy applications. Right. Therefore, the question is now I can outsource that to a cloud like Amazon, or I can do that in-house, but I still want it to be on a cloud. I want to get the benefits of cloud, which is the fastest way to develop and deploy Okay, apps. guys, we're getting the hook here. really appreciate you coming on. I'm glad you could swing in, Lou. Okay. Always great to talk. Jim, final word. I'll give you guys the final word in this segment. Just tell the folks out there uh, what's happening in Silicon Valley around OpenStack here at this event and the overall vibe in Silicon Valley. Someone said, hey, is OpenStack hot in Silicon Valley? What's the answer? How would you categorize the state of OpenStack in Silicon Valley? I think we're all um, sort of proud to be a part of this next wave of computing. We think this is really transformational in terms of changing the entire data center and the way that we look at data centers and the way that we look at our own IT organizations now. It's not just cloud computing up in the cloud, it's also cloud computing in our own data centers. Yeah, and I think it's great to see the maturity in the last couple of years. When, sorry. Raiders game this weekend, you know, football. <laughs> the football black hole, that doesn't do yeah, it. You know, the black hole. And, <laughs> and you know, it used to be a couple years ago about how's this all going to come together, and now we're all talking about how we're going to do deployments together, and that's just the most exciting part. Guys, got a tear in my eye on that note. Uh, <laughs> okay. Being a resident of Silicon Valley, Okay, Jim McKee. And we're doing it as a community. Yeah, that's it's a lot of fun. I got to say, it is fun. I love doing this. I mean, I sit here and interview people all day long. It's uh, time consuming and sometimes, you know, takes a physical toll, but I love talking to you guys. Appreciate it. This is theCUBE. We love broadcasting the data from the, from the tech athletes to here from Cisco. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>